I thought it would be fun to do some simulations of the solar system. Specifically, I thought it would be fun to destroy the solar system. How many Jupiters can we add to the solar system until it like blows up? How to blow up the solar system. <laughs> would, would YouTube let me title a video of that? I don't think so, but that's the goal. I'm gonna be using Rebound, which is a great little software package that's an n-body integrator. So you just add particles to it and you can move them forward in time. It tells you information about their orbits and all that good stuff. And I called it little, and that's, that's a huge compliment because if you have a computer with Python and an internet connection and also PIP, you're like three words away from doing an n-body simulation. Pip install rebound, there it is. It's all in the package. It's beautiful and wonderful and you can run it on a laptop and it's great. It's made by um, Professor Hano Rain. I think he's at Toronto. Um, but don't bug him about this. He has a Git page, go, go play with it. It's really fun. If you wanna learn the simulations, this is a great way to start, rebound. However, the thing about simulations is that they're calculators basically, right? You give it some initial conditions and then the simulation is like, cool, I'll run that. And then it gives you output. The usefulness, the verification, the validation of the output is all on you, the user. So you have to know what you're doing, but you also have to know what the code is doing before you can even understand or use your results. So Rebound is a beautiful, brilliant scientific tool that can be used to do real science I'm just gonna be playing with it as a toy. So let's get started. Okay, the first thing I wanna do is try to make a normal solar system. So let's look at that. So what you're looking at is our solar system with the sun at zero, zero, and there's eight planets here. Jupiter is the big red boy. I made him red because I'm gonna be adding Jupiters to our simulation. And the earth is a little blue guy at the center. Let me zoom in for you. All right. So you can see Mercury, Venus, Earth is the blue guy, and then Mars, because we've zoomed in on the center of our solar system, and our sun's just a happy little boy in the center. Nothing happens here. I'm running at a relatively short time step. I think I've got a thousand years between images. So you're seeing multiple Earth orbits in one image, like between images, it's going round and round and round. But on the, the scale of the universe, on the scale of the age of a solar system, a thousand years is like zero years. I wanna blow up the solar system in a short time scale. Like, yeah, of course, the solar system's a chaotic system. The solar system, as it is right now, as we live it on Earth, is not a stable system. Over very long periods of time, the system will be thrown out of what, like it's like a simile of a stability right now. If you run a simulation of the solar system for billions of years, most of the time Mercury will get kicked out. All sorts of stuff can happen, but in a short period of time, we would probably consider the solar system stable-ish. And I want to unstability it, instability it. I want to ruin it. We're going to break it. Let's make it explode. Uh, let me describe what you're looking at. So. Every time the GIF moves, you're seeing the points, which represent the positions of the planets move. That is their actual position in 2D space at that time. So Rebound is a 3D code. We could look at the edge on solar system, like, you know, most of it's straight on, and then you have Pluto kind of at that, but I don't care about that. We're looking at it just face on, just the, the 2D structure of the solar system. So you're seeing the points move but the little circles represent the orbits. And orbits are a tricky thing. While the solar system is in relative stability, everything's on like nice little nearly circular orbits. What Rebound is doing is that every time step, it's recalculating what that guy's orbit is, but that's not necessarily representative of what the planet is gonna do. However, when it's stable and everything's circular, it's a pretty good approximation. What this means, what I'm trying to prepare you for is that when we ruin the solar system, we're no longer going to have circular orbits. We're going to have like elliptical weird guys, hyperbolic weird guys, things that look offset, things that have moved in the Z axis, which we're not going to be able to see because we're only looking at 2D. And those things are going to change from time step to time step. Once everything's got a bunch of Jupiters, we're going to see some wild things happen. Um, and in a chaotic system, orbits don't really make sense to talk about. Um, but we'll... <laughs> We're gonna get there, it's totally fine. So let's add a Jupiter. Let's start from the outside in. Let it, let's turn Neptune 
into a Jupiter and see what happens. So I'm gonna update my simulation. Oh, hang on. So what I'm gonna do is inside my code script, I'm gonna replace Neptune with a Jupiter mass object. So it's gonna have the same initial orbit and everything. So let's see it. All right, so I have it as it was for the first frame and then I introduce the Jupiter and you can see we got two little Jupiter boys. And this is the outer solar system and you can see everything's on a kind of a nice orbit. You might see our Neptune and think that it is moving backwards with respect to everything else, that it's going retrograde. Uh, that's what that's called. So if everything's rotating clockwise and one guy's going this way, you would say that guy's retrograde versus the prograde orbits that are going in the same direction. However, it's just like a really unfortunate time step thing. We're just seeing it and it looks like it's going backwards, but it's not. But let's talk about that for a second. Let's talk about how solar systems are made. So this is the cartoon version, okay? You have a giant gas cloud and it collapses. And because of angular momentum conservation, all that stuff just can't collapse directly to it. It has to conserve angular momentum. So the easiest way to do that and get like the lowest energy state is you get a nice little disk around your little baby protostar, okay? That's the same reason galaxies have disks. It conserves angular momentum. It's the same reason black holes have accretion disks. It conserves angular momentum. So planetary systems make little disks. That's why all of the planets are often on nice little disks. They're not always that way. This is just the cartoon model. So you have your little baby star and then a disk of gas and dust and ice and stuff. And that disk of gas and ice and stuff starts kind of clumping together and you get little baby protoplanets. And then eventually your star turns on, it starts fusing and stuff and it starts doing solar wind stuff. And your little disks of like ring planets have now turned into real full fledged planets. So everything generally in the simplest case should be orbiting the same direction. It should all be prograde because that's what the cloud was. They all came from the same cloud and collapsed with the same style of angular momentum. However, that's the simplest model, but you can get a lot of interesting things. Like space is big, anything can happen. Like maybe you had a collision between two solar systems and you get a retrograde planet. Maybe there was a rogue planet that just fell in. All kinds of stuff can happen. In our case, in our solar system, it's all prograde. Let's zoom in on our two Jupiters where Neptune is a Jupiter. And at the center of our solar system, not much is going on. Everything's still vibing. Earth is still happy and fine. And that's not what we want. So let's introduce another Jupiter. We're gonna turn Uranus into a Jupiter. The first thing you see is like the original solar system. And now we've got three boys. So that's what we have. We have our three Jupiter boys going around just vibing happy as a clam and that's not what we want. We want to destroy everything. Uh, the thing here is that you can see Jupiter and Jupiter Uranus are kind of lining up at the same time. They're becoming in resonance. So I suspect if I ran this simulation for a longer time than I'm willing to, that resonance would cause some disastrous effects. So a resonance, let me show you a GIF of Jupiter's moons. <laughs> That's what resonance is. And when that happens with big massive boys like planets, really interesting things can happen. For example, the most, for example, the leading model of solar, how am I doing? Where was I? Uh, for example, I think, I think I stopped with for example. Uh, the nice model of the solar system is the leading model of how our solar system became the way that it is. So the idea is that in the very early days of the solar system, you had Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars on the inside, and you had five gas giants in the outer solar system, Jupiter, Saturn, mystery box, ice planet, Neptune, and Uranus, okay? As the solar system was evolving, Jupiter and the mystery box started resonating. And they had a really strong resonance in such a way that it caused a collision that made the, the mystery planet that's no longer in our solar system just get kicked out. And then you had four, right? You have Jupiter, Saturn, Neptune, and Uranus. That collision caused the other planet to leave 
it caused Jupiter to move a little closer and then these guys to move further away. And that collision also caused a little resonance between Neptune and Uranus where they started like crisscrossing their orbits until eventually Neptune got kicked way out. And now it's like super near like the edge of our, well, not the edge of our, it's far away. So now you have the inside of the solar system, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune. And that's called the NICE model. I'll try, I'll try to find a GIF of that simulation. So resonances can cause some huge long-term effects, but we want immediate destruction. So I don't want to run this guy for a long time. I want this to happen immediately. I'm sure these three Jupiters would do some interesting things, but that's not what we're here to do today. So let's look at the inside of the solar system just to see if anything is happening. And I think you can start to see some stuff. The sun is like moving a little bit. It's wiggling a little bit. So it's being pulled by those outer massive planets because now you have three Jupiters. But also look at how elliptical Mercury's orbit is getting. So stuff is happening here. But let's turn Saturn into a Jupiter. There we go. Four boys. A similar situation in the outer solar system. They seem happy to just do that. If we look inside, we see Mercury getting a little bit elliptical again. And Earth and Venus seem to get really close to each other sometimes. I think something could happen here, but not fast enough. Not enough destruction. Let's put some Jupiters on the inside. So let's go back to our regular normal solar system and this time just take Mercury and replace it with a Jupiter mass object and see what that looks like. So you can see Mercury as the red particle, it's now a Jupiter. It looks like it's overlapping spatially all of the other guys, but if we zoom in, there she is. It's just a big, big boy. You can see the Earth and Venus getting really close to each other. I think if we evolve this longer, something interesting would happen. We have some more elliptical orbits, uh, but something is definitely gonna happen here. But let's speed that up by turning Venus into a Jupiter and just destroying the lives of everyone on Earth. Let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> I don't know if you saw that, but we're looking at the outer solar system and the very first frame is Earth just like immediately flying away. Let me restart it for you. Bye. <laughs> Uh, you can see some huge elliptical orbits at the center of the solar system, some hyperbolic orbits. Uh, this seems like some of the planets have gotten kicked out. Let's look at the inside of the solar system and see what's happening. So Earth is gone. Oh, and the sun's just bouncing away. The sun is just leaving. And this is, this is, this is what I, and it's kind of empty now. All right, let's go back. It's kind of empty now. Let's go back to the whole solar system. Bye, Earth. So this is what I was talking about with the orbits. When everything is pretty stable, the orbits are really helpful to show you where the planets are gonna be. When things are chaotic like this, the orbit changing from frame to frame is just telling you that the system is not stable. Things are gonna be bouncing around and boy, have they. So we did it, you know, Lohisimos. I'm gonna take all my Jupiters out except for regular Jupiter and make Mars a Jupiter. And let's see what happens with just just one extra Jupiter. Elemental P break. P -p 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 break. All right. Let me find it. All right, Mars. There's the whole solar system. <laughs> nice. Immediately you see those chaotic orbits. We've done it. Two Jupiters, one at Mars, one at Jupiter is enough to destroy everything. Let's look at the inner solar system. And oh, wow, look. The Earth is hanging on. The Earth is pretty close to the sun, just vibing. That's kind of fun. Mercury and Venus are gone. It's just the Earth and Jupiter fighting as the sun is moving, moving away. Bye-bye. That was it. What a successful day. What a successful video. Um, thanks for watching. I'd like to end with the simulation I'm going to call Oops All Jupiters. It actually seems happier than when there was just two Jupiters. Let's zoom in. Oh, 
Oh, the earth is gone. Thanks, thanks for watching. How many Jupiters would you put in the solar system? Le leave a comment below. I feel like if you're a very 2006 kind of person and good at counting, you would have counted the little dots and noticed I didn't include Pluto. Well, I have made a video on that topic and I do think Pluto is a planet. You can watch the video here. You see, filming Angela is like, she's gonna learn how to put the little thing so people can click the box right here. But editing Angela probably wants me to tell you that it's just in the description. I don't know how to do that. But I made a video about the Pluto problem and I do think Pluto was a planet. And so to actually end this video, here's oops all Plutos. Nothing is gonna happen because Pluto's a teeny tiny boy. Thank you.